So just recently a subscriber asked me, Marty, why do you have so many worm farms? And what's the reason for it? Are you using it for breeding purposes? Are you trying to get more cocoons? Do you have different types of worms in different types of worm farms? Do you have outdoor worm farms? Do you have indoor worm farms? Well, basically, I have outdoor worm farms. And they start from the small worm farms, which I use which are the most common ones for teaching the worm wranglers who are just getting started at worm farming at home so they don't make any mistakes. And we use that in the videos, like it's 30 videos or something, in the worm wranglers member area, in the level three there. So we use that for that. And also I store my worms in there and feed them lots of different foods and keep them happy. So it's a storage area for me as well to keep up my numbers. But then what I did is I introduced the biggest worm farm ever, right? The big round thing. And I've got about eight of those big barrels, big bins, but I've got four currently set up at the moment. And they're to store my worms when I'm actually harvesting from the compost rows, bagging up, I'm getting the worms out and putting them back in those big bins and keeping the populations out. Now they do go out through the bottom and spread back around and that's sort of the whole idea, but just to keep my numbers up so I don't lose them. Because every year, when I'm doing like big runs, I run out of compost and cocoons and I've got to breed up my numbers again. Windows wide, the curtains fly to catch the evening breeze Without you here to keep me warm, believe I'd rather freeze Believe I'd rather freeze And how long can we walk that line between the sea and sand? How long can we bide our time for dreams we never planned? For dreams we never planned? When the sky said the winter time was coming on, and you cried to see a shadow wave was growing long across the lawn. See this cool plant here growing underneath my papaya tree? Well, this is a betel leaf plant and it grows in Southeast Asia predominantly and really well known in India, Thailand, they eat it in the Philippines, right through Asia really well, Southeast Asia because it's a tropical plant. But I pull it off here in the subtropics and I think if you're in a temperate area where you didn't get frost, it would grow also. And I make these beautiful, lovely edible wraps with it. You can also like use the leaves like baklavas, I think I pronounced that right. And they're very high in protein. Apparently if you eat like five leaves a day, then it keeps away body odor and things like that. But look, I found it's a companion underneath a lot of fruit trees, especially my papaya here and my avocado tree. And my daughter, Karen, she just loves eating it. Working like a dog, day and night Trying to finish up this job And do it right It's only a few things that a man like me needs And Jesus whiskey and you right next to me Singing, hey honey, I'm coming home I don't know why I'm gone so long Hey honey, I'm coming home to you Promise please that you're gonna be the light on for me Hey, honey, I'm coming home soon And know what we're gonna do Heaven knows that you put your time into him Hell of a woman, sweet red wine, and how you choose Let's get one thing straight, it ain't about what you do for me, well I'm gonna love you, and I love you loving me Singing, hey, honey, coming home, I don't know why I've been gone so long Hey, honey, I'm coming home to you I said, hey, honey, promise please that you're gonna be the light on for me Hey, honey, I'm coming home soon we're gonna do
coming home I don't know why I've been gone so long Hey, honey, coming home I don't know why I've been gone so long Say, hey, honey, coming home I don't know why I've been gone so long Say, hey, honey, coming home to you We're gonna do